Hello and welcome to the track Polyglot in Memory. My name is Jana Richter. I'm heading a product management team in Waldorf for the SAP Cloud Platform. And I would like to take the next 10 minutes to give you at least my interpretation of this quite um, yeah, diverse track called Polyglot in Memory Applications. And yeah, what we, you can understand out of that before we then kick off the agenda with the detailed sessions. So, what is polyglot in memory? Let me start with polyglot. Probably the closest interpretation that of course you can have of this title is speaking multiple languages like, like um, a polyglot person who travels the world and can locally speak the languages that are needed in their um, according regions. So of course multi-language support for a platform as a service offering is pretty key in order to enable developers to use the language that first of all they speak and secondly, that suits the current use case that they would like to implement. However, what we've seen within enterprise applications, of course, that there's different needs around the languages that should be supported. So at least a lot of SAP customers ask for enterprise support, meaning if they choose a certain language in order to develop their enterprise applications, they expect to be able to closely work with SAP in order to fix problems, get response for questions, and if there is issues, that we can resolve those and bring those back into the platform. And as you could imagine, that of course is something you can't do for 50 or 60 languages and runtimes. That's always a limited but still growing set of languages that we can support on this level. Nevertheless, of course there's a need from the community and from the developers to be open for some more languages. And of course, using Cloud Foundry, we can use the community build packs offered by Cloud Foundry in order to ensure this openness or if you even have some more needs not yet fulfilled by the Cloud Foundry community um, build packs, you have the option to bring your own build packs. Well, but language, of course, is one of the things being polyglot. But if you travel the world and have applications developed in different languages, of course you don't want them to be isolated, but be able to connect to the rest of the world. So to be able to integrate and connect to other applications out there. And of course, having properly defined interfaces and APIs to have the applications working together is one of the means. However, what we see quite frequently is of course that many of our customers still have a huge on-premise footprint. And that will probably remain for the next decade that a lot of core systems that you would like to connect to your cloud applications are on-premise. And enabling a connectivity and means to hook up those systems in a secure manner and um, allowing connections between the cloud applications, of course, is key. So within SAP, we have developed a technology called SAP Cloud Connector that enables you to have an agent on premise that hooks then up to your cloud applications and to your accounts. And cloud connectivity, of course, is similarly important because many applications that you do develop are actually extending or connecting to other cloud applications that you would like to seamlessly hook up with and have single sign-on, similar theming, and so on enabled. And integration can, of course, be more than that. So process integration plays an important role as well. If you have certain applications that actually are web services or any other APIs that require a certain level of mediation and translation in between. And data integration could be quite a need as well if you say you want to develop more analytics-focused applications that first of all should gather some data from different sources, bring them together and join them, and then create some analytics-centric applications on top. So the different levels of integration, of course, are key as a capability of a platform as a service in order to enable to be truly global and polyglot. And lastly, of course, usually as a developer and as an enterprise, you're not just picky about the language that you want to develop the application in, but where this is running. So we see with a lot of customers and partners that they do, of course, have trusted vendors in terms of infrastructure as a service. And in many cases, there is a need to bring the applications that you develop close to where the rest of your applications and solutions reside. So really implementing a truly multi-cloud deployment of Cloud Foundry and of a platform as a service um, environment is very important as well to be available on AWS, Azure, Google Cloud Platform, and of course in our case in SAP data centers. 
So that allows you then to not only choose the language of choice, but to choose the environment and the region of choice as well, where then the applications should reside and connect to the rest of the world. Okay, so far at least for my interpretation of polyglot. So what's in memory then? Well, usually developing is not just about picking a certain language and developing the application, but you need some supporting services around that. Classically, of course, in Cloud Foundry, the backing services that in many cases are a database where you would like to store the relevant data that is important for your application. Of course, in a database and technology of choice, be it MongoDB, Postgre, and so on. Or it could be other backing services that allow you to have a caching mechanism enabled. The specialty that we add with the in-memory aspect is that we offer SAP HANA as a backing service and database within a cloud platform as well and within the Cloud Foundry environment. So SAP HANA really gives you the ability to process data in memory and to persist it in memory and to have large data sets that you can then work real time on, be it on the one hand side for application logic or of course for analytics cases to enable your business to get instant insights. And SAP HANA is more than just a database. It provides some advanced data processing means as well that allow you to really use some libraries that give you geospatial functionality, predictive functionality, and so on. One specific approach about this with SAP HANA, we even brought a lightweight Cloud Foundry set on premise. So you can use something like HANA Express, deploy this locally on your PC, develop your applications, and at a certain point in time, then decide to have this application deployed to Cloud Foundry and be enabled there. And of course, large data sets in a growing world are not enough. So the space of big data is emerging and is emerging for us as SAP as well. Our answer to this in many extents is SAP Bora, where we really want to leverage an in-memory distributed um, computing environment in order to really analyze huge data sets behind the scenes. Good, so, but it's not only about polyglot and about in memory, but in the end, it's of course about the application that you want to develop at the end of the day. So, not a big surprise, of course, at Cloud Foundry, we encourage um, our customers and partners and our internal groups to develop microservices and follow the 12-factor design principles in order to really develop nice applications that scale well, that isolate well, and that can be changed over time in very agile manners. Because, of course, one of the main drivers to go to the cloud actually is to be able to agile react on requirements and on changing conditions and to be able to implement those changes very quickly. And as just said, of course, that is true on multiple levels. It's on the one hand side the business applications that you create on top, that customers, partners, and SAP creates on top. It's business services as well, so reusable entities that provide business logic down to technical services such as blockchain, machine learning, internet of things that are developed in a microservices fashion as well to individually grow over time without dependencies on the other services. One thing that we see quite frequently in this area is of course a need for UI and mobile first. So that's one of the main drivers that we see from customers and partners that of course functionality is important but in many cases, people are very picky on the user interface and to be able to quickly generate user interfaces and to test that with your target audience. So having tools that allow you to enable rapid prototyping, rapid development based on templates is one of the key features of a platform as a service offering too. And of course, whatever you create should be suitable and cater multiple devices that are out there. So not just laptops, but of course, mobile devices at the end of the day too. Some common needs are on the one hand side, whatever you create, to create this with a unified look and feel, so that for the end users, it's not visible that it's multiple microservices living somewhere, but it's one unified user experience, but still that needs to be flexible to be able to incorporate custom design guidelines and corporate theming. And all with the goal to put the user first, right? So of course, as much as we love technology and databases and so on, the basic idea is that we want to fulfill the needs of the line of business and the users and to be able to react quickly 
on those needs. And typically to start with co-innovation and design thinking principles before actually deciding then which language and which backing service is supporting this need best. So as you've seen, hopefully, <laughs> the polyglot in memory, of course, is giving you a lot of options on how to interpret what we want to talk about. And that is, of course, reflected in the agenda that you see for today and tomorrow. And with that, I don't want to take you through all the individual sessions, but just hope that you have a great time here and enjoy the sessions and the different topics you're going to face.